Hello Spurs fans, welcome back to Spurs Live. I'm here today with Matt. How are you, Matt? Hi guys. And as some of you might notice, uh, Josh isn't here today. The other Josh, regular presenter, he is in Germany, which is fitting because the topic of the day, as always at the minute, is Harry Kane and this soap opera S transfer saga to buy in. At least he's in Berlin and not Munich. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, hopefully he's getting some insider info for us. But we have had some news on Harry Kane's sort of soap opera today. Um, obviously, well, there was the meeting on Monday yesterday with uh, Tottenham and Bayern hierarchies in London, trying to come to an agreement with um, each other on the terms of Kane's transfer. It looks like that meeting wasn't sort of successful in terms of finalising a deal. Um, which is starting to become a bit frustrating for fans. It looks like the valuation sort of 20 to 25 apart right now, um, by an offering 80, I believe, um, which was a step up from their last offer of 70. Um, but it looks like Levi's holding out for the 100 million. Um, we don't know this deal in regards of add-ons and whatnot, but that looks like the case. Um, talks will presumably continue this week um, to try and wrap up a transfer. It looks like buying a confident on their side of getting a deal done. Matt, what are your thoughts on that uh, sort of meeting yesterday? And do you think this week it will change? Uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, the Bayern, the things coming out of Bayern Munich, like literally a week ago, uh, they were literally, the reports were uh, Bayern are uh, anticipating a fruitful meeting and they're expecting to be able to get the deal over the line in the meeting. And then they've gone and had the meeting. And as a result of the meeting, they're now saying, uh, we never expected to get this tied up today, but things are going in the right direction. Um, so in all honesty, uh, I mean, look, this is frustrating me. Like, I hate it when anything like this goes on. I have just make a decision one way or the other. All right. Um, but I do, I do feel that it is simply a case of um, they need to pay the money. I mean, I'm not going to lie. This is one of the greatest English strikers of all mm. time. Okay, um, he's pretend, I mean, he's on course to break Shearer's goal scoring record. He's already England's top goal scorer. Um, but he's not just England's top goal scorer. He is also one of the most prolific internationals when you look at how many games, it, how many internationals it took him to get to the 50 mm. goal mark. He is better than Ronaldo, Messi, Lewandowski. He's got better stats than all of them on the international stage, like on that well, base. This is the thing that confuses me with this meeting is that it, I feel like everyone knows what Levi's price is. It's been pretty well reported. He's looking for 100 million. That's yeah. the that's the way to get it. That's the only way that Harry Kane gets out of Tottenham Hotspur this summer is if they pay the money. Um, and I don't know whether the negotiating is on sort of how Bayern can get around with add-ons, buybacks, clauses, whatnot. We already know that they've pulled out of their move for David Raya now. So if David Raya seems to be the flavour of the month with regards to teams that need a goalkeeper at the minute. Um well, Arsenal's, they, the, Arsenal's exactly. the latest yeah, team. That makes no sense to me either. Um, I, I don't know why Raya would go there because I think Raya would be second fiddle to Ramsdale. And I, I can't. Think understand. He, I think he's better than Ramsdale, but I also agree that I don't think he can take it. Um, but regardless, it looks like Bayern have reportedly not gone through with the move for Raya because they need the money for Kane. Um, but at the end of the day, it looks like everything was moving towards Kane to Bayern. The sort of meeting, it looked like. Both parties were getting on amicably, amicably um, and that a transfer was going to happen. But some news coming out uh, today from the Evening Standard, Dan KP, um, about Harry Kane possibly planning on staying at Tottenham Hotspur and signing an extension. Um, if no agreement is reached, reached with Bayern Munich or anyone else before the opening game of the season at Brentford in less than two weeks, uh, that Harry Kane will consider signing an extension provided that there is progress shown under Ange Postacoglu. Matt, what are your thoughts on the, the article that broke this morning? Um, well, I think it's simple, really. There are basically three things that can happen, OK? Uh, the first option is Kane goes to Bayern. Um, I don't see him going anywhere else. Um, there's talks that PSG have got strong interest. Can't see uh, that. 
PSG have got the funds to pay the asking price from Daniel Levy, mm. uh, but reports suggest that Kane is just not interested in a move to PSG. So I think he's not going to go to England this year. Um, so I think the only place that he can go is Bayern, but he could mm. go to Bayern is what it is. Okay. Um, the second option is we show considerable um, ambition. We back Postacoglu. We sort our centre-back situation out. Um, Kane ends up happy with where we're going. Come Christmas, we're top four. Uh, we're still in all the domestic cups. At that point, Kane signs a contract extension because mm. he's happy with the way the club's going. Or I imagine that will be the last one as well. That this will be his big contract, which is why this saga has been going on. This is his last sort of big contract he'll ever get. Well, yeah, I mean, I think, I think if, he, if he signs an extension, it's probably likely to be a five-year extension. I imagine so. Yeah, four or five yeah. years. I imagine. Yeah, um, and then the third option is obviously that okay, he doesn't go to Bayern. Um, he stays because he said that he won't leave the team mid-season. Um, so I don't think he'd go in January. Uh, but if he stays, if he's not happy with what's happening with the team, uh, then he goes on a free next year. And I think yeah. he will go on a free next year. Well, I think the, the key cog in, the, in this, as it always is, is, is Daniel Levi. I mean, this is a masterstroke from Harry Kane and his team. If if they're responsible for this sort of breaking news this morning, it is a masterstroke because... The differences with this saga and the Man City one in back in what was it 2021? Yeah, he went out and did that interview on the overlap on the golf course with Gary Neville, and the whole fan base in an hour turned on him completely. Um, they called him a snake, he didn't turn up to training. Um, they questioned his sort of loyalty to the club, and it was real talks of it d diminishing his sort of legendary status at the club um, and amongst the fans. This time, it's different. You know, if he, if he starts against Brentford, he's not going to leave us in the dark um, and he's not going to sort of leave, leave us to sort of float in mid-table. He's going to stay um, and he's going to commit at least this season to the club to give us some sort of stability amongst a time of, of really bad change, uh, to be honest, because the window started quite brightly for Spurs, didn't it? You know, we got in Vicario quite quickly, Manuel Solomon on a, what was a sort of a savvy deal on a free. Um, it remains to be seen whether we have to negotiate with Shakhtar over a fee for him eventually. And obviously James Madison, which was a massive signing at the time, I thought. And it, that happened so quickly. But it feels like in the past month, the mood of the club has drastically fallen. You know, I feel like the mood the mood of the club was in a pretty great place, especially with Postacoglu's start in terms of the football being played and the results might not have been there against West Ham, but we saw promising signs of what was to come. And this centre-back hunt has killed it all. You know, well, it's a combination of the centre-back hunt, the, the ticket prices increasing um, and just a couple of other things around the club. But it feels like the mood of the club is at an all-time low and it now feels like... Daniel Levi can't really let go let go of Kane because he's fumbled this rebuild so badly in terms of the defensive acquisitions, selling players. I mean, the list of our squad list is what, 36, 37 men still? And Mikel Arteta has said this week that he's got a squad of 30 and that's, that's not even realistic to be able to handle. So there's a lot of work to be done. And it feels like if Kane leaves now, we've got a whole other problem to address. And it's our biggest problem then to address. So what are your thoughts on, you know, how can Levi save this? Um, if Kane goes, yes, it leaves a massive hole in our team. I mean, a player of his quality is impossible to replace. Mm. Very simply, we will not have a player of his quality probably for the next 20 years. But if you build a team properly, you've got 11 players doing the right thing in the right way. There's ways around it, um, but yeah, we we will we we will be unlikely to have a player of his ability and quality again in the next twenty years. Well, if you look at the room of replacements, you, you know you've got I think it's Mateus Tell from from Bayern, Brennan Johnson linked as well, Orban yeah, from. Gen. I'm not gonna lie, these these guys are very different profiles to Kane, aren't they? Very yeah, different. But, 
I mean, they're they're a lot more mobile than Kane, but I said at the end of the day, I think that's where any any improvement go uh, ends. Because in every other facet of the game, mm. Kane is a better player. But then Kane is literally one of the world's best. So getting the replacement is not impossible. Um, but genuinely, if he leaves, um, we have Richarlison, who is... I mean, I'm not going to lie. He's Brazil's starting number nine. He's Coming off the back of a hat-trick and a, a, a promising performance, yeah. despite against poor opposition, but a promising performance. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and, uh, but he starts for Brazil. Yeah. So, so he's, he's undoubtedly got quality. Oh, he, I, I, I honestly believe that if he starts every game next season, okay, he's not going to be hitting 30 goals, but he'll certainly be getting... 10 to 15, 15 I reckon. 15, 20, I reckon. No, I reckon more than that. I reckon 15, 20. I, I think if he starts every game with the quality that we've got around him playing Postacoglu's mm. attacking football, I think he gets 15, 20 goals, which I think is an all right return, in all honesty. And I think, so I think that's fine. Yeah, we need to get someone else in, but I don't think it's as pressing as the centre back situation. Mm. And whether Kane stays or Kane goes, that centre-back situation needs to be sorted. We need to get rid of Sanchez. We need to get rid of Roden. Uh, we need to get rid of Tanganga. Um, mm. I've got no issue with us losing Dyer and Davies as well. Um, uh, the reality is we just need a defensive rebuild. And um, essentially, if Kane stays... We need that as defensive rebuild yeah. to convince Kane to sign a contract. Well, that's the key to that's the key to, to Kane's future, isn't it? Is is can we show him that but we're that, ambitious but, and that we yeah. want to be in, in contention? Yeah, of course. But like, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Like, irrespective of whether Kane stays or goes, we need that defensive rebuild as a of team. Course. Yeah, yeah, of course. That defensive rebuild, even if Kane goes. We still need that defensive rebuild. Um, And I'm very, very frustrated at the moment with the fact that we've gone, what, six weeks from the signing of Madison with nothing else? Nothing. Not even a link. No news, no updates, nothing. Um, Other than possibly Van der Ven could be off because I I can't understand why. 30 million for Van der Ven is fine. We should be able to go and activate that irrespective of taps over. Irrespective of it, I, I, I can't see why we haven't. No, and I, I agree, and I, um, I don't understand it. But then, having said that, in I mean, I know the uh, the way Levy works, and he has done in the past. Um, we've quite often been linked with players. It goes quiet. There's no indications, and then mm. suddenly, we sign a we sign a player that we were never linked with. Yeah. Um. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, I know what Daniel Levy's like, and it's to the detriment of the team, and I absolutely hate it. But I wouldn't be surprised if he signs two or three centre-backs in the last day or two of the window. It just Le- feels like right now the club's on a knife's edge, and it's it's really up to Daniel Levi. If if he wants Kane to stay, he's got to put his hand in, you know, in his pocket and, and get the centre-backs in. Regard, regardless of Kane stays a ghost, he has to do that. But if he wants to secure the future of Harry Kane, that has to happen. Yeah, and because Poster Coglu as well. It, it, he's absolutely shafted Poster Coglu so far. I mean, I'll I tell you what, the only way, the only way that doesn't happen, the only way that doesn't happen and Kane stays is if we suddenly start winning games 6 5, 5 6, 5 yeah. 4. Like, we we just somehow magically managed to just start outscoring the other teams because I'm not going to lie next season. I wouldn't be surprised if we average conceding two goals a game, two goals, going, yeah. two goals a game is what? 76 goals. We conceded 63 last year. We will concede 76 goals next season. That's two goals a game on average, Right. So the only way Kane stays without us putting that money in is if somehow Postacoglu's attacking now is so incredibly remarkable that he gets us outscoring the other teams 
and we're winning these games. Well, he's already said that the start to life under him is rocky. It is. The first couple months is going to be rocky. So yeah. it's up, but it's up to Levi just how rocky those those first couple months are with the, how the rest of the summer goes. Yeah, exactly. he's, Levi's let the, the sort of mood around the club fall to pieces. Um, and we've gone from having a great window, well, a great start to a window, to we're in trouble. We're in deep trouble. When you look around at Villa getting in, Diaby, um, Pau Torres, who we were linked with for years. You look at Arsenal signing Timber, now looking at Raya. They've already got Rice. You know, everyone around us is getting stronger. United, Liverpool, everyone's getting stronger. We're standing still. You know, we've got our best player possibly on the way out. And the only way that he stays is if we show the same ambition that everyone else around us is. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, we need to be pay- playing fast, attractive football. And from the first, from the the couple of preseason games we've had so far, it seems like Postacoglu has the ability to deliver that. Yeah. But it's pointless delivering that if we don't have a rock steady defence. Um, just on the topic of fast, attractive football, I just want to say well done to the Lionesses for yes. their six-one victory this afternoon. Absolutely fantastic game. Top in the group, going into the uh, final stage of the tournament. Uh, we play Nigeria next, I think. I believe so. You know, yeah. And shout out to Lauren James as well. A fantastic performance oh, from her again. She's, she's better than Reese. Yeah, she's, she's better than She's better than Reese. Fantastic. And I'll tell you what, her second goal being disallowed was absolute robbery. Yeah. There was there is no way that was offside. That was a joke of a decision. And there is nothing worse. There is nothing more like just galling than when you get a dodgy offside decision in the build-up play and then you put in a curler from 25 yards and they're like, well, no, it was offside. Yeah. That offside had nothing to do with it. I've just put a curler in the top corner from 25 yards. Uh, But no, she was absolutely fantastic today. Uh, There were some really good performances from the whole team and just... um, I tell you what, right now you can tell from the way I'm talking. I'm far more excited about the lionesses than I am <laughs> to the right now. So am uh, I. I'm, I'm worried. Quite frankly, I'm worried. <laughs> I'm worried for us. But I think we'll wrap it up there, Matt. Thanks for joining us. Um, it was great to have you on. Uh, let us guys, let, guys, let us know in the comments. What do you think? You know, will Harry Kane stay? Will he go? Can Levi save the season? Um, make sure to drop the video a like if you enjoyed it, and make sure to subscribe. You know, Spurs Live is going to be the place for any updates throughout the week for all your Spurs news and uh, for our match reactions and previews when the season starts in a couple of weeks. So thank you for joining, guys, and we'll see you later. Cheers, Josh. Take care, guys.